Hey what's up guys, it's Graphic Phoenix back with another video today. We're doing a video on how to prepare plants for your reptile cage. For me, this is specifically chameleons, but for you it might be something else. So this is a schlafera, or a umbrella plant. And as you can see, it's sitting outside here. It actually, I was on my way home from the garden center yesterday, and I found out that I had aphids. So how I treated that was... I got the high power I got the high power hose, sprayed it all down, and then got a spray bottle, just like a normal misting bottle, put in some soap and sprayed it and uh, soap and water, I mean. And basically what the soap does is actually dries out the like exoskeleton of the bugs, specifically aphids in this case. And they used to be all they used to be all up in there and on every little like point here but now I'm going through and I don't see any so I'm gonna bring it into the garage and I'm gonna repot it I have a much larger pot and I'm gonna put it in there along with some extra dirt alright so we finished it off we repotted it into the much bigger pot filled it to the brim you guys want to make sure that you leave enough room to put a layer of rocks on it and basically what those rocks are going to do are prevent them from eating the soil because a lot of chameleons especially will go down and eat the potting soil that you pot their plants in so a good idea is just to put in a layer of rocks big enough so where they can't eat them uh, I'll be getting this done over the next couple days and then moving on to the next step which is wiping each and end of which is wiping each and every individual leaf with rubbing alcohol in order to get off like this film um, you don't want it to look like that, you want it to be nice and green. So that'll be coming up later on. I'm going to leave it for today. So here we are a couple days later. And now I'm ready to go on to the second step of setting up the umbrella plant for use in Rango's cage. Now I may or may not have mentioned earlier, but that, the soil down there, will not be staying like that. I'm actually boiling rocks right now just to clean them off just in case there's anything bad on there and that'll be used to cover all that substrate so he's not able to eat it. I don't think that he would being that he's on coconut husk already and he doesn't eat that. So hopefully he won't, but you never really know. All right, so the next process that is actually the most time consuming involves premium cotton rounds or like makeup face pads and rubbing alcohol. So all you're gonna wanna do is just hold it over get some alcohol on there and then just you see all these like white spots on the leaves you're just gonna rub it and of course I'm not gonna do this holding the camera the whole time with rubbing alcohol and then do the bottom as well and they turn nice and shiny and all clean now the reason why you're doing this is because we don't know, chances are these are just water spots. In all honesty, that's probably what they are. But you never really know. They could be pesticides, they could be anything like that. So I strongly recommend cleaning the outside of your leaves before putting a plant into your reptile cage. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I know it's not completely finished, but I'm not going to come back after I'm done it. Just because it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean... You're wiping all the leaves and then just making sure it fits, whether you're trimming or whatever you're doing. Just make sure it fits into the cage. And I'm not going to be putting it in there today. I'm just going to get this done and then maybe tomorrow or something like that, I will be setting up his new cage, hopefully. Don't hold me to that, but that's what I'm hoping to do. So then maybe Monday or Tuesday you guys will have the new... Uh, like the how to set up a chameleon cage video. Anyways guys, I hope this helped. Now this is true for all plants. You can use this tactic for every plant that you have and are wanting to put into a reptile cage. Of course, just double check, make sure it's safe for your reptile. Make sure you're not gonna be harming anything. And just make sure that it looks good. I mean, I picked this one because they have very sturdy stalks. Rango can walk on it and not do a thing. As you can see, Kai has destroyed his and it's still doing fine. So that's just something you want to keep in mind. Now, do your research before you go to the garden center simply because they are either teenage kids that wanted a job working there or they're old ladies that like to garden. And uh, they don't necessarily, and for those of you that can't take a joke, I'm not actually serious. I'm just saying that they don't actually know what's good for a reptile and what's not. They know what might be poisonous in general, but 
Some things are good for reptiles, some things are bad for reptiles. So just be sure to double check on that and you should be good. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. In the comments down below, just say if you like having live plants in your terrariums or cages or whatever you want to call them. And if you actually have live plants in them. If not, I strongly recommend it. I mean, it does a lot of benefit. It holds humidity. It gives off humidity. It purifies the air in your room, so that's kind of nice. There's a great number of benefits. I'm going to finish wiping off every individual leaf. I hope you guys have a good one. If you liked the video, drop a like down below. It's always nice to see that number rising. As well as leave a comment, as I said before, uh, with if you have any live plants in your terrariums or anything like that. And any questions, comments, concerns, things that you might be curious about, I can certainly answer that for you guys. And, of course, don't forget to subscribe. We're coming down to the end of May Madness. It's going to be weird not posting a video every day. I hope everybody's enjoyed. Graphic Phoenix, out of here.